Okay everyone, hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to create a plate drawing using Rhinoceros for the final exam, part 2. Which the first thing you're going to want to do is open up the Rhinoceros software. When you get to the startup template, you're going to want to choose small objects in inches. When that is complete, you'll get these four views. The final exam only needs the front view, so go ahead and double click it so that you only have the front view to look at. I would roll the wheel on the mouse and then right click and drag so that you can kind of set up your drawings so that you have a nice grid system here for you to work. And then what we're going to do is look at our answer key. Our answer key looks like this. It's just a simple shape with some circles inside it. Since we're going to be using polar coordinates, I'm going to be choosing this bottom left corner as my origin. And again, we don't need to be very specific with where our origin is because we're going to be using polar coordinates. All right, so let's study this answer key for just a moment and then we'll get started. I'm going to use curve, line, line segments and that allows us to be able to draw multiple lines. Once I've done that, I need to choose my origin and I'll pick my origin probably like somewhere right here and then we can begin. Again, I'll go look at my answer key so that we get an idea as to the general direction that we want to go. I'm going to go clockwise, but you can choose any method you wish to draw your picture. So now that I'm here, I need to type in some polar coordinates. So up in my command line up here, I need to start typing in some symbols. So I'm going to use the at symbol and then the distance, and then I'm going to go shift comma, which gives us the uh, special angle sign that we need, and then we're going to type in our angle. And in this case, we're drawing straight up, so that is 90 degrees. And then now we have that complete. And we're going to continue at 7 and an angle of 0, because we want to draw a line to the right. At 5 at an angle of 270, at 8, at an angle of 0, at 5, at an angle of 90. And then what you do is you continue to use your polar coordinates until you've gone all the way around and completed the drawing. Great. Now we have our drawing complete. What we need to do now is looking at our answer key, we need to see where we need to go to plot these circles. Now these circles have a diameter of 2 inches for the small one, 4 inches for the large one. Notice that the centers of these circles are located 3 inches up from the object line. Notice also that the center of these circles are located 3 inches in from this corner, 11 inches and 19 inches. So we need to use, again, polar coordinates to plot the center of these circles. So back in our software, I return to curve, line, line segments, and then I'm going to come down here and make sure that my object snap has been activated. Once this has been activated, I can now enable end points, middle points, center points. I'm going to click in this bottom left corner and I'm going to type in at 3 at an angle of 90. Then I'm going to type in at 3 at an angle of 0. And now what I've done is I've plotted exactly where the center of that first circle is going to be. When you're done drawing a line, press enter to stop. And then we can now go to our curve, circle, center of a circle. And then now I can click right here on the endpoint and then draw our circle. Now this circle has a diameter of 2 inches. So we need to tell the computer that I want a diameter. So we will type the letter D. If you notice, I typed it in up there. I type the letter D. I press enter. And then we need to type in the number. And in this case, the answer key says that the diameter is 2 inches. So I type the, the number 2 and I press enter and now I have created my circle. I can now go curve, line, single line from this point because we already know that this distance is already three inches and now I want to go 
11 inches. Add 11 at an angle of 0. And now I can put my curve, circle, center of a circle, right here. And the diameter of that circle is 4 inches. And then the last circle I need to put in is 19 inches away. So at 19 at an angle of 0. And then I put my circle right there. Did you notice that I went over here and I typed in this circle? You can choose this center of circle or you can go curve, circle, center. Also, you have some choices. I type the letter D and I type the number 2. Great. Now we can remove these lines because we don't need them anymore. All right. Now it's time to label our drawing. We come down here to our answer key and you can see that we have some dimension lines. We need to include these dimension lines in our drawing before we print. So now I'm going to roll the wheel on my mouse and zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to go to my dimension pull down menu and I'm going to put in a linear dimension. I'm now going to click on the endpoint and I'm now going to start to pull out the dimension that we need. But this dimension is a little large, so we're going to drop the scale of it. So I'm going to go to my dimension pull down menu, go to my properties, and I'm going to change my scale. Now that dimension is a little bit easier to work with because we're going to be placing a lot more dimensions on our drawing. So notice why I'm just going to each corner, clicking, and then dragging out the dimension, just like that. Over here on this side, I do the same thing. Now, how do I dimension these circles? Well, back in our object properties, we want to make sure here at our object snap, we have our center selected. So when I go dimension linear, I can click on that edge, that corner, and I can come right up here, and I can choose the center. Click my mouse, and now see how I can choose which dimension I want. Let's make this dimension go this way. And then I'm going to repeat it. Down. And we'll go again. And one last time. Great. Now we need to label these circles with a diameter. So I go dimension, diameter dimension. I just click on the circle and it draws everything that we need. You just click on the circle and then pull out the dimension. All right. At this point, what we need to do is we need to create a border. So to create a border, we go to our rectangle tool and then we're going to frame this entire drawing. Then we're going to repeat it again. This rectangle down here in the bottom right corner is where we're going to be putting in our information. So, to use our text, we'll go to Dimension, Text Block. And then we're going to come down here and we're going to click our mouse. Now, if you remember, I changed the dimension size to 0.5. I want to make sure that my text is the same size or it'll be too big for this box. And now I'm going to type in the information. You're going to need to include your name, the opportunity for your class, DDP, and then make sure you tell me that it's final exam part two. And then go ahead and hit OK. And then now your information is inside that box. We would then go file and print. For part two of the final exam, you want to make sure that you print it. So if you notice in our print preview, we can see that our drawing in our border has fit. You want to make sure that your view is extense and that your drawing is scaled to fit. And then of course you're going to want to be choosing the 508 printer number one. And then your paper would come out, and then you would turn your paper in for a grade.
Thanks for watching. Good luck on part two of the final exam.